Welcome to the League of Nerds comic book segment number 140. I'm John Cooney here to talk to you about comics being released the 24th of September 2014, beginning as usual with my first five, meaning these are the first five books I intend to read this week, and I'll give you a little more depth on them, starting with at number one, Saga number 23, with the simple solicit, Betrayal. Series writer Brian K. Vaughn responded to a question at San Diego Comic-Con about character development. Yeah, I was just writing about this. I don't know about uh, that. We were doing a Saga hardcover for the uh, the first time. It's coming out in November, and uh, it's going to collect the first 18 issues. It's a big, massive thing. We're going to have a bunch of extras in the back, including how Theo and I brainstorm and the script to, uh, thumbnails and uh, what have you. We're going to debut the new cover, which is pretty amazing uh, tomorrow. Sorry, the sun. Anyway, it's a cheap plug, too. But I was writing that, that yeah, how every issue, I was, I have real concrete plans, and then sometimes they get blown up. But, yeah, the, the, the biggest one was I always intended uh, Sophie, who's the name of the um, uh, slave girl, uh, and she was always intended to be a big part of this series. But when I got to the issue, I was sort of like, maybe, am I really sort of deballing the will by having him take on this girl? Like, he's a brutal murderer, and he kills kids all the time, so maybe should he just take off this girl here? Is that, would that be more dramatic? And I guess when I started writing Saga, my big concern was a lot of times after creators have kids, like, it's when they write their crappy kids' books, and it's like, they get sort of watered down, and I wanted to write something really filthy in adults. And so, yeah, they, they had this sort of big conflict about maybe he's going to kill this poor girl. But in the end, it's just, it's mostly the way Fiona draws the will in my head. And the will is just sort of this big, dumb, sweet idiot who just, like, dresses up like a little kid. And uh, he just, uh, he couldn't do that to that uh, poor girl. But yeah, it's like every issue. Um, the characters and I do get out on the Bayesian and number two, we've got Guardians of the Galaxy number 19, an original Sin tie-in. Last we checked, Star-Lord, Thanos, and Nova were trapped in the Cancerverse, but Star-Lord and Thanos seem to be running around just fine. So what exactly happened to Richard Rider? Series writer Brian Michael Bendis explained what it's like picking up the story from Dan Abnett and Andy Lanning. Quote, It's funny, there are some diehard and hardcore fans of DNA, God bless them, and already they're mad at me for what I've done. I understand loving a book's creative team, but they killed him. I'll take the hit on the stuff I've done. I've done plenty. You still want to yell at me for Hawkeye? I'll take it. I got it. I didn't kill any of the Guardians, though. DNA killed those characters. They wouldn't even be around if it wasn't for us bringing them back, so you can get off my ass a little bit on this one. There would be no more Richard Rider stories at all if I wasn't writing one, so I don't know how else to put it. This one's not on me. I understand you have an affection for DNA, but you can't pretend they didn't write that part and you're mad about it. It's okay to love and be frustrated by the work of creators. I do that to people all the time, but that's their thing. I've got my own stuff. I've got people mad at me that there's no Peter Parker in the Ultimate Universe. They don't know what to do with me. I own that, but I'm not wearing their sins too. Close quote. At number three, we've got Edge of Spider-Verse number three of five. What is the secret of Dr. Aaron Aikman's Spider-Man? Who are the villainous Red Eye and Na Amura? And can Aaron possibly live through Moreland's arrival? Rising star Dustin Weaver of Avengers Infinity and Shield makes his Marvel Comics writing debut in the most wildly imaginative story of the year. Writer-artist Dustin Weaver described his take on Spider-Man, quote, My Spider-Man is a man named Aaron Aikman, and unlike Peter, he chose to be Spider-Man. He did it to himself, to become a hero for his city. I guess that says a lot about the character of my Spider-Man. He's got a big ego, and being good at being Spider-Man is a point of pride. He doesn't struggle with his responsibility, he enjoys it. Other than his origin being different, he also has completely different casts of supporting characters and villains. Aaron does share some things in common with Peter. They are similar type, white, male, fairly young. Aaron may be a little older, and they both have high intellects. But while Peter has his career as a photographer, Aaron never strayed from academic and scientific pursuits. He's an accomplished and ambitious scientist. In Aaron's personal life, he struggles to save his romantic relationship with his mentor, the brilliant doctor Kaori Ikigama. As Spider-Man, Aaron is facing an incredibly elusive and mysterious villain known as Naamura, who has been kidnapping people all over the city. The question is, will Spider-Man learn the truth behind Naamura in time to save his city, or does fate, despite all of Aaron's ambition and his intelligence and his strength, have other plans for him? Close quote. At number four, we've got Batman Eternal number 25. 
With riots breaking out all over Gotham City, can Batman stop the march toward martial law? Series co-writer James Tynan IV spoke about Batman Eternal at San Diego Comic-Con. The big thing is that the readers of the series under know from the first page of the first issue and Batman 28 how big and crazy this story is going. No, none of... Uh, none of the characters are going to be left untouched, and we're definitely going to cause some real trouble in Gotham City. We're not, uh, we're not, <laughs> we're not just like resting on our laurels. We had such a big opening, uh, but you know, as they saw on the first page, we've got Batman crucified on the on the broken bat symbol and in front of a burning Gotham. Every single every single issue is a step closer to that moment, and things are only going to get bigger and more dangerous and more exciting as we move forward. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot to be excited about. Characters that uh, you know you'll see coming back into the fold, villains and heroes who we haven't seen in the new 52, and you know just really really exciting stuff. <laughs> and at number five, we've got Amazing Spider-Man number 1.5, the climactic conclusion of learning to crawl. We all know that Uncle Ben told Peter about power and responsibility, but there were some secrets he kept from Peter. Discover Clash's fate that kept him secret all these years. Senior editor Nick Lowe said this regarding learning to crawl, quote, There are a lot of things that are important about learning to crawl. On a metaphorical level, it defines who he is as a character in a new way. On a more grounded continuity level, it's literally planting seeds that are going to become important and amazing as we move forward. It's not just a simple retreading of Spider-Man's origin. It's a twofold story because it's Peter's story and Clayton's story, the character who becomes Clash. And it'll be fun to see the explanations as to why we've never seen Clash between these early stories and the current day stories. That's stuff that Dan has worked out, and I can't wait for that to unfold, both in learning to crawl and in the amazing Spider-Man stuff moving forward. Close quote. Rounding out the top ten at number six, we've got Superman Doomed number two. A man of steel who has lost himself in the monster must once again go up against the first threat he ever faced to Superman in the form of a villain who now has the power to warp reality with a thought. But this time, if he defeats Brainiac, Earth will be lost. Batman, Wonder Woman, Steel, and Supergirl are joined by Starfire, Guy Gardner, and Green Lantern Simon Boz, and even Swamp Thing to make a fateful decision about their friend. At number 7, we've got Harley Quinn Futures End number 1, Harley and the Joker make it legal at last. Follow the happy couple to their secret honeymoon spot, where it's literally till death do they part. At number 8, we've got Armor Hunters number 4 of 4, This Was Just a Battle, Now Get Ready for the War. Exo Man of War has played the ultimate gambit and finally leveled the playing field against the villainous Armor Hunters. But the galaxy's deadliest killers haven't come this far just to surrender. Their final charge is now upon us, and it will take the combined powers of Exo Man of War, Unity, Bloodshot, and the rest of the Earth's most formidable heroes to save our world from a full-scale cosmic reckoning. The summer's biggest crossover event is going out with a big bang, and when the smoke clears, everything you thought you knew about the Valiant you will be forever changed. At number 9, we've got Cyclops number 5. Still weeks away from pickup by the Starjammers, Cyclops and Corsair look for help getting off a hostile planet elsewhere. Continuing the trend would be rescuers might not be what they seem. And at number 10, we've got Harbinger Omega's number 2 of 3. Toyo Harada strikes back. In the aftermath of the tragic firestorm between the world's most powerful Omega-level Scythe and his wayward heir, casualties were claimed on both sides. Now the last remnants of each opposing force, the Harbinger Foundation and the surviving renegades, have been shattered and driven deep underground. But Toyo Harada, newly exposed as the world's most foremost superhuman, has no one left to stop him. For the best of the rest, from DC Comics we've got Bodies number 3 of 8. As the present-day murder investigation explodes, we learn more about Whiteman and Maplewood's unexpected past, while Edmund sees a most unsettling view of the future. Perverts, pipettes, Poland, and a paranormal collide in the chapter we call Suspects. Next, we have Booster Gold Futures End number 1. Trapped out of time on a world that defies reason, Booster Gold struggles to escape the fate that has held him and so many forgotten heroes captive. We've also got Catwoman Futures End number 1. Catwoman's battle to be kingpin of crime in Gotham City takes an unexpected turn when Selina and Black Mask are revealed to be one and the same. Next we have Dead Boy Detectives number 9. 
Empty theaters can be spooky places where the echoes of dead hands forever applaud and the leftover gloom of forgotten tragedies lingers. And nowhere is spookier than the grand, gaudy, gilded Victorian music hall where Charles and Crystal go to investigate his mother's suspicious death. But will the melodramatic ghost still haunting those creaky floorboards make a swift exit, revel in a few more moments in the spotlight, or take revenge for being upstaged? If Charles isn't careful, this could mean curtains for Crystal. We've also got Flash Futures and number one. It's the final showdown between the Flash and his future self for control of the Speed Force, with Wally West's life hanging in the balance. Next, we have Justice League Dark Futures and number one. An emotionally and physically scarred Zatanna struggles to find a way to return her team and the House of Mystery itself to our own dimension, but the cost might doom them and our world. And we've got Superman Futures End number 1. There's a new, much darker Superman prowling the streets of Metropolis, but who exactly is he? From Marvel Comics, we've got Inhuman number 6. The Unspoken has attacked Medusa's island nation and successfully taken it. With all the Inhuman royal family captive, it's up to the new humans to show their mettle. Next, we've got Loki, Agent of Asgard number 6. The march to Axis continues. Loki's back from the 10th realm and facing his greatest challenge yet. Can you say Dr. Doom? But with Valeria Richards in the mix, who's the hero of the story, and who's the villain? A new jumping on point for the series fans literally can't get enough of. Grab it while stocks last, true believer. And looming in the wings, Axis. We've also got New Avengers number 24, extra-sized issue. In eight months, time runs out. And we've got Storm number 3. Long ago, after she was worshipped as a goddess on the plains of Africa, Storm was stripped of her mutant powers and fell into a deep depression. A brilliant inventor named Forge came to her rescue and nursed her back to health, showing her that she's so much more than her superhuman abilities. And a romance blossomed between them, but it was a love made to be broken. Now, years later, Storm has the powers and stature of a goddess once more. She's reunited with Forge. But what does fate have in store for the pair this time? From Dark Horse Comics, we've got The Massive number 27. The Massive has been found. The story of its disappearance is as mind-bending as Mary's origin. But the solving of the two mysteries only draws attention to the secret still unexplained, the reason for the crash. And from Valiant Entertainment, we've got Exo Man of War number 29, Armor Hunters Aftermath, The World Has Changed for Eric of Dacia, the armored earthbound hero known as Exo Man of War. Unable to protect his friends and allies from the interstellar hunters sworn to kill him, the Visigoth warrior who would be king now recoils from the horrendous fallout of his actions, even as a threatening new future looms. Everything changes now. Out in trades this week, we've got Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 Angela trade paperback. Spinning out of the dramatic conclusion of Age of Ultron, dimensions collide and Heaven's most fearsome angel arrives and comes straight for the Guardians. Gamora, one of the galaxy's greatest warriors, holds a deadly secret that could bring down the entire team. And when Gamora battles Angela, the entire universe hangs in the balance. Then the galaxy's most mismatched heroes find themselves at a crossroads when the effects of infinity begin to rise. Can even the mysterious Angela's power help combat the fallout from Thanos' master plan? And what will it take for Star-Lord to betray the entire Marvel Universe? The biggest blockbuster hit of the year continues as artist Sarah Pacelli and Francesco Francavia climb aboard, and comics legend Leo Gaiman joins the team in this one-of-a-kind comic book event, collecting Guardians of the Galaxy number 4 through 10. Next, we have Batman Death of the Family Book and the Joker Mask set. This new collection set includes the critically acclaimed tale Death of the Family from the superstar number one New York Times best-selling team of writer Scott Snyder and artist Greg Capullo. Now, this seminal Batman trade paperback graphic novel is paired with a replica hand-painted vinyl latex mask of the Joker that features sewn-on hair and a white elastic band. It's a must-have for any fan of Scott Snyder's groundbreaking work. And last, we've got Batman Gordon of Gotham trade paperback. Jim Gordon, Gotham City's top cop, stars in this new collection of crime stories from the 1990s that stars the colorful, determined cops of Batman's hometown. Collects Batman Gordon of Gotham 1-4, through Batman GCPD 1-4, through and Batman Gordon's Law 1-4. through Okay, so that's just a few of my favorite books out this week. There's still plenty of others available, and I broke out all the Marvel titles this week in their own video, as well as a separate video for all of DC, and even a video with the top independent publishers. You can find them all on my YouTube channel at he'sgotissues.com. 
And we'll also have links up on the leagueofnerds.com, our Facebook page, so be sure to like us there too. Of course, you can follow everything I'm reading on Facebook, Pinterest, Tumblr, or Twitter. You can find links to everything in the About section at heescottissues.com. And a reminder that both He's Got Issues and the League of Nerds are proud members of the Comics Podcast Network. So until next week, I'm John Cooney, and I've got issues.